boom there we go ladies and gents happy friday to y'all we got a little bit of energy on the show today we're gonna be talking about business and boy if you've ever been in one you've probably stepped in a hole or two on your way to what you hope is success so let's talk to somebody who's got a lot of experience and let's do this here we go shut up and sit down is your business in need of customers then you found the right show Hernan Cias is the business bro, and he makes getting customers fun and easy. Watch, listen, and learn as each episode is designed to sell. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. All right, ladies and gents, time for us to drop a little bit of a fire intro. So let's do this. You know, it sucks when you start a business and it fails. It's a bruise to the ego and definitely and oftentimes a bruise to the pocketbook. But oftentimes it's some of the greatest lessons in education that you're going to learn from when you fail. And today's guest has over 52 years experience, some failures and a lot of successes. And as a serial entrepreneur, he's helped his clients avoid some of those pitfalls and even dig themselves out of some of those self-made holes. He specializes in the startup process, funding, acquisition, and more. Let's welcome to the show principal of FinBiz Group, Gene De Palma. All right, Gene, all the theatrics, all the fun, and you get to talk to me today about some of the real things in business, some of those not very fancy topics that people want to talk about. So I, I got to ask the very first question that I always ask. Um, Why are you doing this? Because I want to know. What got you into this and kept you going for 52 years in this space? Well, 1969, I started my first business. And really back then, the only people you had to do, had to talk to was your banker, your lawyer, an accountant, an insurance man and other entrepreneurs. So what I did then was I talked to a banker. Banker said, no, no money. Talked to an accountant, talked to a lawyer friend of the family. I ended up talking with other small business people. The, the guy that had the local hardware store and the sporting goods store and so on and started to build some foundational information that way. And there were through the 60s and 70s, there were a lot of failures of small business only because they had no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. So in 1969, I, I or 1996, sorry, 1996, I sold the, the last business I had at the time. And in 2000, I decided to open up a consulting firm or a coaching firm, whatever you want to call it, uh, to help small businesses get over some of the hurdles that I experienced for those for those 30 some years of not really having a group or somebody to talk to. And we start with our first question is, why do you want to do this? Well, let what me makes, ask let, okay. let me ask you a little bit about that, because, uh, you know, my very first business venture, I started it out of necessity. Right. I mean, that's okay. kind of the way it happens for yes. a lot of people. Right. Um, and I was, you know, 19, 20 years old. I knew nothing. You know, I, I grew up, we, we, the only thing I knew about money growing up was that we didn't have any, like that was the extent of my knowledge of, of anything. Um, right. my first business went down in flames and it was in the closing down process that I learned so much. I, I learned about Uncle Sam and, and the state of California and, all, you know, employment taxes. And I learned about, you know, um, um, co-signing things, personally signing for things versus an entity signing for things. I learned about long-term leases and contracts. I, there was so much that I, you know, out of pure accident and going broke that I learned. But once that business bug bit me, like there was no way yeah. I was going back. Now at this yeah, point, you, I was like, okay, I can play this game. I just need to learn the rules a little more, right? Right. It is very easy. It's very easy to get hooked on it. If you've had a little bit, if you would have had a little bit of success or um, maybe you did, yeah, I did. a little bit of success when that first business, it, it, it kind of gets, gets you and okay. You failed once. 
well, all right, I've learned this. Now I can do the next one better. Yes. And then you find things that you didn't learn the first time around. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's a constant learning experience. Um, something my father told me as a child was I had two things to do every day of my life. And I've lived my life this way. I have something new to learn every day of the week. And I have to make somebody smile or laugh every day. If I do those two things, I'm a better person for it. So I try, I learn from every client interaction. We learn from every um, prospective client interaction. Uh, every time I go to the store, I learn something new about retail marketing, whatever, because I'm not afraid to approach somebody and ask questions or just take a look at the way they have the shelves laid out and then try to figure it out on my own. Uh, I do a tremendous amount of reading of all the packaged stuff that's out there for us, uh, which nothing against the higher education, but I got news for you guys. You miss a lot in your bachelor and master's degrees when it comes to real business stuff. Um, it's nice to, what, what, what the college experience does for you is it helps to provide a, a foundation. Yes. It gives you, it, it will give you the, um, the ba a base point and hopefully make you inquisitive so that you go out and you learn. They don't teach you anything about entities except they exist. Yep. You have to go to the well, law department to find that out. Gene, it reminds me of, uh, you know, working out, right? Uh, I can read all about getting a six pack and learning about how to do the proper crunches and, you know, mm -hmm. what diet I should do. But it's not until you actually get down and do the work that you're going to learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you, how hard you can push and what's going to take you to that next level. There, At some point, the academics need to stop and the implementation needs to begin. Otherwise, we suffer from analysis paralysis and we don't actually go right. anywhere, right? The, the act right. of doing and the act of failing is also the act of achieving. It's just one step at a time. Right. The, yeah, and, and each each step of the way, you've got to be willing to ask another question, which is which is one of the biggest things people do not do. People don't ask enough questions. Um, oh. You know, there's that old saying that floats around: "There is no such thing as a dumb question." Well, that's correct, but for some reason, people feel like they're stupid if they ask questions. So the idea is to ask questions. You, you read a book on, um, yeah, you know, you read the annual for QuickBooks, God help you, but you have no understanding of what accounting is. Well, okay, you read the book, it tells you what, but you still don't really have an idea of what's supposed to go where. One of the one of the things small business people do, and I was guilty of it myself in my first two to three businesses, I thought I could do everything. You know, Saturday morning, I'll, I'll do the bookkeeping for the week and, you know, we'll, we'll sell and we'll stall during the week, so on and so forth. And Saturday morning comes along or Friday night comes along. Somebody calls, and says, you want to go fishing? Saturday morning, I go fishing. Next thing what happens, it's either Sunday afternoon or the next Sunday or the next Saturday. And now I got twice as much work to do. And I'm talking back in the days where it was number two pencil and ledger papers. Yeah. <laughs> So that's not the yeah, uh, that's not the funnest no. way to do accounting, by the way. I remember I remember doing that. My degrees in accounting, so I, you know, oh, doing really? some of that early okay. stuff. Yeah, doing some of that early stuff by hand. Uh, some of those general ledgers, and I mean, yep. anything from trying to balance books. Oh, it was horrible doing it by hand. Same thing when I went to tax school. You know, I I was I was mm. of the last generation that learned to do taxes by actually filling out the papers, right? Like ah. filling out the 1040 by hand and then going to the next schedule and completing that schedule and then going back to the 1040 and working nope. through it. But the knowledge that I gained by right. doing it that way, all of a nope. sudden when we went to a software, it was much easier to navigate the software because I knew oh, what yeah. it was doing. I knew what it was trying to accomplish. It's a different feeling when you've worked through some of the minutia. You had developed the foundation. Yes. Everything we do today is all based on the foundations developed in prior years. You, you, you just said it with the accounting. 
because you had to manually do it, because you had to periodically, maybe you had to periodically go to the books from the IRS and look up a tax law to see whether or not something would fit and so forth. Because of all of that, it made it easier and to do the, the taxes through the software. But everything that we do today is all built on the experience of previous years, of previous generations. And that sometimes gets lost. You know, I, I will periodically have, periodically have uh, someone come to us who is much younger than myself. And probably the average age of the people in our office is about, uh, you know, well, taking me out is about 43 or 44 years old. Throw me in there and it gets worse. <laughs> but it, we'll have somebody come in that's younger, wants to start a business. And it's, they, I get this look off of him periodically that why is he here? I mean, what he's talking about is old school. Well, I got news for you. Everything's built on old school. In 20 years, what we do today will be old school. So there's a lot to learn from the old school ways. And sometimes old school is better than even some of the new procedures and, and so forth that people use. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Let's let's talk a little bit about what do you do? Let's talk a little bit about what you do, because, you know, you, you mentioned how it's the old school, right? Right. Um, but you know, my big thing today is very much focused on the advertising and marketing space. Right. And I love to go and listen to Zig Ziglar stuff all the mm -hmm. time. Ziglar on selling, Ziglar to the top. Yeah. Uh, and one of the main reasons is because uh, his idea of selling is that it's a transference of energy, right? It's building relationships and asking the proper questions. Right. And it's, it's really about communicating with an individual, identifying their needs, and then being able to fulfill that need with your product or service. It's, it's, right. it's very human to human interaction mm -hmm. where today, even though you see an ad that pops up on a social media feed, it's not connecting with you unless there is a human to human interaction, unless you still have some of those core fundamental old school tactics in play. Otherwise, it's just something that passes by your screen and never grabs your attention. And, and you agree? Oh yeah, well, with, without a doubt. There, there, there's two things that are, in my opinion, are missing um, in business today. One is quality customer service. Uh, and a lot of that, and again, my opinion has been lost because of all, all of the electronic media. People have gotten used to seeing people on a screen, communicating with Zoom, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and there's not as much interaction with people any longer. I personally, I like to go out, shake hands, meet people, do meetup groups, uh, and so on and so forth. Because it is interaction. You can read the person. You can... You, you get an understanding of who they are, how they are in a setting, how you are in a setting. And it's very easy to overhear somebody else's conversation. Mm. So somebody may hear me talking to somebody else and says, oh, you know, maybe I got to talk to this guy. Hey, maybe he can help me out. Or I may hear somebody who is maybe having a problem with their business. And at some point I may go approach them. They don't know I overheard their conversation, but it's the person. It's dealing with the people. I what well, I don't text. Okay, if, I, if there was a way for me to turn the text feature off in my phone, I would. I don't text, and that upsets some of our clients because they can't get a hold of me by text. I've got a phone, I've got email, I've got the postal system. There's many ways to get a hold of me. I don't have to do text. I think text is very, very impersonal, and that's a problem. Because again, we've taken a step back from people. I also don't like celebrities used in advertising and marketing. Really? Uh, the guy, uh, the latest, there's, oh, yeah, Dynamite uh, from the, the 70s, uh, a gentleman who was in the a show. I can't, now that fast, I can't remember the name of the show. But anyway, he was a celebrity back in the, the 70s. Uh, they have him now doing a commercial for Medicare supplemental insurance. Really? Why would you do that? 
because chances are everybody who looks at us says, well, he's got a couple of bucks in the bank. And he was well, on TV he at some this? point. Yeah. What, what, what's he? What, I'm supposed to believe him. I, I think in, in marketing, we've lost using the common person, which is something they used to do way back when. They would bring real people on that were a little more believable than yeah, an actor is. I'm going to second you on that one because that's one of the main reasons why on our show we love and we push as much as we possibly can the video testimonial, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a it's not a celebrity. It'd be cool if I did work for a celebrity and they were a testimonial for what I did for them. That would be a little right. bit different, right? It's different. But I do enjoy the fact that, it, you know, for example, you're going to be on the show today at the end of the episode. I'm going to ask you what your experience like, what your experience was like on the show. Mm -hmm. And that is a video testimonial of you, Gene, telling me what your experience was like on the show. And other people will be able to see that clip of you saying whatever your experience was like on the show. An actual, real life individual who had an interaction with me where we had mm -hmm. a conversation about you and what you do in your business. I, I, that is right. powerful to have a conversation. Even if mm -hmm. today you can't shake hands and kiss babies like you could, you know, last year or the year before that. Yeah. Uh, but at least to be able to have a conversation, to, to move the needle through, you know, actual face-to-face -face conversation where you can see and read each other's facial cues and expressions, to me, that's so powerful. It makes yeah. the difference in trustworthiness. It makes a difference in, in how long and how, how developed our relationship goes. And it also helps generate more referrals for me because at the end of the day, if you had a good experience, you're going to talk about it. And you're going to have a relationship with me, not just some avatar or some little logo that you saw online, right? Right. Exactly. Um, you know, it's a human being that buys the product or service. And if you don't take the time to get to know who your customer is or who your client is, and they don't get to know a little bit about you, why are they going to buy from you? Mm. Why are they going to deal with you? We, you know, people say, well, we'll ask us, you know, how do you sell? How do you sell consulting, coaching, and, and bookkeeping services and tax services and so How do you sell that? Well, we don't. We do not sell. We don't approach any prospect as if there's somebody who needs to be sold. We provide them information about us. We answer their questions about their need. We provide, though not the, the obviously not the complete solution, but we provide them information on what we would do to solve their problem and then let them make the decision as to whether or not they feel we can do the job for them or they need to go someplace else. Mm -hmm. There's no hard sell. We don't close with, you know, the, the, the common three yeses that you look for during a, an interaction with a, with a prospect. We don't look for the three yeses or anything else after the one hour uh, uh, initial interview that we have or meeting that we have we let them go on their way if you have any other questions give us a call if you'd like a proposal please give us a call send us an email based on what we learned today and a few other questions we're more than happy to put a proposal together for you Gene, it sounds like you're dating your clients like you're actually courting them like like you know you well, you yeah. introduce yourselves and you sit down you have a conversation you figure out if you like each other or not and then right. if you want to move forward you have a date number 2 right and you know and sometimes date number 2 is free i mean i hate that word free no charge yeah there there are times clients will get a a, a second date no charge because we have to gather more information to put the proper proposal together for them because we didn't learn enough the first time. Now we normally, everybody has the one free hour that everybody, you know, a lot of people talk about one free con one free hour consultation. Well, ours is supposed to be an hour, but if you look around this office, do you see a clock? Yeah. Do you see a watch? Yeah, nope. So that one hour could turn into an hour and a half, and I wouldn't know it until somebody lets me know that my next appointment is waiting for me or that I have a conference call coming up or something like that. Time, when you're trying to find out whether you can help somebody um, or trying to make them comfortable and answer their questions, 
um, so that they become comfortable and they learn something along the way, you can't put a time limit on that. Yeah, it's there's impossible to do. Yeah, and and you're the thing is. The way we do it is very similar. I mean, we literally want to have a conversation with you. This is why the podcast is is set the way it is. I want to Mm -hmm. know who you are and I want you to know who I am. And, you know, at the end, you're going to know we do, we do video testimonials. We do paid ads and that's the business that we're Mm -hmm. in. We're in the advertising and marketing space. And you either like what we do. And when you're in the need for that sort of thing, you're going to be in our, in our sphere and you're going to connect with us or you're not. And that's okay too. Mm -hmm. But we have a conversation. I keep I keep talking about the conversation like it's it's bizarre and weird because in today's society I feel like it, it is. Is, it is right like we we're yep. so connected and yet we don't talk to each other hardly ever. You know I, I I feel like I know so many different people through their pictures on Instagram and Facebook, but do I ever sit down and talk to a lot of these people? No, no. it's a lost no. art. Right. Well, one of one of our uh, one of our sons, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, said to me, he's got 1,100 friends. I said, where the hell did you come up with 1,100 friends? <laughs> and he said, on Facebook. Ah, I said, okay, so you got 10 friends on Facebook and 1,090 that you've connected with. A friend is somebody who will come over to the house and help you when you need it or knows they can call you when they need help. A friend is somebody you have a, a back you bar, backyard barbecue with and so forth. And, and, and you know, you, you have other friends also, but most of what people call friends today are acquaintances. Yes. And that's it. Yes. They're acquaintances. If he called number 960 on his list back then <laughs> and said, look, I, you know, I, I got a flat tire. I need help. Person going to say tough luck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not coming out. Yeah, really. So, you know, I I have uh, I have a a low number of um, quality friends, personal friends that I could count on in a pinch. But I got a hell of a lot of acquaintances. Let me ask you this: personal business. Let me ask you this though, because you know, I find that some of my best clients become Mm -hmm. some of my really good friends because I really get to know them. I really get to understand who they are, especially, you know, uh, I told you right after I failed my first business, the Mm -hmm. first thing I did was I enrolled in tax school because I wanted to know who this Uncle Sam was and why the hell was he taking all my money? Uh, And I ended up starting a a small tax practice. uh, And I always loved the tax season because it was like, it was like therapy. Every time I showed up to a client's house to do their taxes, it was the entire therapeutic year who died who was born who got married you know my kid went off to college you know all the different scenarios that could happen in a in a situation it's just story after story after story yeah (laughs) and and i get to sit there listen to the story and pull the Mm -hmm. the relevant tax information out of that story but because of that conversation every year because of that vulnerability of them sharing things with me they become some of my closest people that I talk to every single year. They show up to my kids' birthday parties. They're part of the family these days. You know, they they become friends, actual friends, friends that I can I can literally pick up the phone and call. But they're mm-hmm. also clients, right? And it, you know, for some people, it's very it's very difficult to um, keep that split between who's who's a friend and who's a uh, an acquaintance or a business you know, a client, um, and they'll, they'll really let them get mingled. And now they start treating the client like a friend when they're discussing a problem within the business. Mm -hmm. And now you got a problem because now you're no longer treating that client like a client. You have allowed the friendship to get in the way. I have a number of clients. uh, Some of our, some of our clients have been with us for 13 years. Um, but I don't know where they live. I do know now. Yeah, I do know some of them, their wives and their children, but the tax side knows more about that than I do. Uh, but I don't need to know that because they're never going to come to my house 
and I'm never going to go to theirs because I keep it. And this is me personally. This is the way this works best for me. Business is business. Pleasure is pleasure. I can I can be extremely visible. I can be extremely friendly and, and wide open with clients. And there's a lot of clients that have been with us long term. No, a heck of a lot. They know we got five. My wife and I have five kids. I mean, the whole bit. Um, but I keep a dividing line there. And I don't, I can honestly say out of all the current clients that we have, none of them are going to show up at my house. And I'm not going to show up at theirs. Because for me, that works best. I have to keep that divide because I well, don't I want to find that myself all up. slipping. I Pardon? definitely twisted all that up. <laughs> I, I did all my well, stuff at the beginning was all mobile taxes at people's houses. They'd come over to yeah. my house. We'd sit down and do all that stuff. Uh, we, it was it was definitely commingled for me there. We do some we we do some um, we do some on site tax work with clients and so forth. But most of it comes to the office uh, and is worked on at the office. Uh, we do, I mean, certain, certain small businesses, you got to do it on a weekend or you got to do it in the evening because the guy's out, the, the person's out making money all day. Mm -hmm. So we do do that. Yeah. It's easier. Maybe, uh, maybe they're close to, to James's house. So instead of having to come into the office 20 minutes or half an hour, just meet him at their house and, and get it taken care of. I mean, in today's world, everything's on a laptop. That's true. So we, you know, we can take care of it that way. But again, if I were to do that, now I'm, I'm no longer involved, directly involved with the tax side. Uh, by not doing that, I was able to get off my meds and I stopped losing my hair. Oops. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> you spent too much time in a tax business. <laughs> uh, but so from my side, I'm more the, I'm more in the, the consulting and coaching side and the finance side. Once the tax stuff and all is out of the way, there's no reason for me to become friendly with those people with, with that group, I should say, because they're after me for one thing. It's either to help coach them through a problem, help them get their business started or help find the money they need to grow their business past that. They may like me. They may like the way that I joke around. Um, they may hear like hearing the old stories, which I use a lot to when I'm dealing with clients. I'll take their problem and say, okay, fine. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. I went through the same thing in 76, or I went through the same thing in 83. And here's what we did. The only difference between today and then is I was shuffling a lot of paper to solve this problem. You got to push a couple of keys. And that's yeah. it. Um, so there's, as I said, there's a lot of value to the old stuff with the new, with, with fixing today's problems. And um, a Wharton degree isn't going to do it for you. 100% agree there. Experience. Yeah. Gene, before we head I out, since we're running low on time, um, sure. you know, I, I, they're they're in every industry, no matter what industry you get into, and in business, there are people that you want to work with and people you don't want to work with. And if people have connected with you and they're like, "Look, this is the type of person I definitely want to talk to. This is where I want to get my advice from. It's a no BS, mm -hmm. just straight business." How can they get a hold of you? Uh, the two easiest ways to do it is one: our my email address is Gene at fimbusgroup.com uh, or phone, which is 610-867-7659. Uh, yeah, no, we do not have an 800 number, 800 number available because most of the country today, you don't need an 800 number. Um, if I am not in my office, I take calls up till 7 o'clock at night. My office extension rings through to my cell phone. But at 7.05, my cell phone gets disconnected from the, the office system. Um, so you can leave me a message, a voicemail message. You can email me. Uh, we primarily work through Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, and uh, the upper parts of Maryland. But we do have clients uh, 
throughout the country. Um, our big thing is that personal touch, and sometimes it's a little hard for us to have that personal touch in Hawaii. Though my wife would like it if I had some clients in, 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 in Hawaii and we had to go see them. Oh, I tell you, you'd be suffering. You have to go out to Hawaii. Maui's my favorite island, by oh. the way. So if you if you have to get customers in Hawaii, you might as well get them in Maui. I, I would do that for my wife. Uh, I'm a cold weather guy. <laughs> So Hawaii doesn't work real well for me. Well, Gene, thank you very much for taking some time and sharing your stories with us sure. uh, on the Business Bros Podcast. Thanks for having uh, me. I, I told you I would ask uh, this last question for you. What was your experience like uh, on the Business Bros? I love it. Um, I like the format. Um, I, I, I was going to prepare some things and send them to you, but I thought to myself, what the heck, let's do it open form, see what happens. Um, and it, it's worked out great. Uh, I think uh, the shows that I've seen of yours, they're, you offer a lot of good content for people. And they just have to make the move to use it. Yes. That's all. Yes. Just take action. Yeah. And by the way, I, I wish it was me that had all the knowledge, but it's guests like yourself that come on the show and share your insight of what you're doing. And you're the ones educating me and therefore educating the audience. So thank you for coming on the show and sharing. It's not, again, you know, just the fact that you've been through ups and downs in businesses and you help people coach from, you know, when they have themselves, when they find, you know, what was the saying? I, I remember, uh, if you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. Right. And oftentimes right. we don't do the stopping of the digging. We just continue to bury ourselves. Uh, and you're, you're helping them, uh, you know, taking the shovel out of their hands, telling them to stop and getting them out. We're, we see ourselves as educators. Our job is to educate those who want to go into business. Those who are in business, the, the education we provide is maybe new systems, new way to look at things so that they can see the forest. You know, you've got that old saying, can't see the forest for the trees. Well, we try Absolutely. to clear it for them. We try to clear it up very, very often. I'm going to say seven out of 10 times, the answer is right in front of the entrepreneur's face. But because they're in that forest five or six or seven days a week, they cannot see the problem clearly. And they certainly can't find the solution because of that. And all we do is clear the fog up for them sometimes. You're absolutely right. Problems cannot be solved by the same level of thinking that created them. Mr. Albert no. Einstein said that, and it's 100% true. So, ladies and gents, look, you're in business, and you might need some help. There are things in your business you probably don't like doing. You should probably have a professional set you up. So make sure you guys check out Gene and his team, www.finbusgroup.com, finbusgroup.com, uh, and get some questions answered. Sit down, have a consultation, ask the question right. it's not a dumb question it's only dumb if you don't ask it because you're never going to get the answer that you're looking for so uh gene thank you very much for being on the show ladies and gentlemen enjoy the rest of your weekend That's all we got for you guys today peace and we're out take care thanks for watching the business bros if you're ready to get more clients and want to work with the business bro, visit our website, www.businessbros.biz, and click on the Need More Customers button, or learn how to generate more referrals with our video testimonial packages. Go to www.businessbros.biz and start getting more customers.